Welcome everyone, Major Frenchy. This is part three of three for the how to connect virtual pinball. This is the software. We're going to spend time with the Pinscape. Thank you to MJR. Uh, it's actually a wonderful resource. We're going to go to the MJR website, clicking under the uh, Pinscape software, and you download the latest, and it will download onto your computer. Double-clicking the uh, .exe file will launch the main Pinscape software. Now, first, you're going to see this line if your Pinscape is not connected via USB. Once you connect it, you should be able to detect the Pinscape right away. If not, you're going to have to create a new KL25Z. Um, you're going to see uh, once it's connected, you have the confirmation here. Clicking under Settings in the main software page uh, will bring you to well, pretty much configuring your devices for the first time. And uh, in our case, it's a rig master, so it's already pre-selected. This is the number of mollusks. Those are the expansion boards. Uh, we have this one, you're going to set to one if it's your first device and you have no LED whiz or whatnot. Pinscape unit one, because we only have one. And here's the orientation of how your uh, KL25Z is facing you when you're playing the pinball. This is the button page where everything is mapped to the actual rig master. So I have a button connected here. Uh, on the actual start, but every other buttons are going to be connected in those additional ports. Here we're going to click on the uh, home icon, it's going to bring us back to the main, and we're going to click on the buttons assignments. So here if you have buttons connected, uh, when you press them, it triggers the key. So this is number one here. See, it actually triggers, one is typically uh, start on the different games, emulators. So we're going to disconnect the button just to show you that if I connect it to the next one and I press it, there we go. The output here is going to test the basically output connections on the rig master. So here's one on the left, then we have two, three, and four. So pressing the action button triggers the action on the actual solenoids. All right, so this is my solenoid number two. And number three. So that's actually the port on the uh, rig master. Port number four. Here I'm testing port 14, that's my beacon. And here I'm testing my five RGB lights that are connected on the MUS light, which is an expansion board of the Rigmaster. Now DOF, the software, is listening to the commands sent by the tables and are sent to the controller board to turn on your toys, like your solenoids, your fan, your contactors. So this is what DOF is, direct output feedback. Thank you, Michael J. Roberts, uh, once again, for your involvement in the community. And this software is a game changer. Folks, we're going to go on the website and in the details next to direct output, um, you can, uh, well, you should actually read uh, what Michael has to say and download the uh, version that works for you. In this case, it's the self-installation file. And I'm going to install it to the default folders. Next, we're going to go in the visual pinball folder and in the root of this folder, we're going to create a new folder and we're going to name it Plugins. Oh. 
Now what we're going to do, we're going to open a new window and we're going to navigate to the direct output folder will be actually located on, under your C drive. We're going to copy the direct output and we're going to paste a shortcut in the actual Visual Pinball Plugins folder. Now in the direct output folder, uh, we're going to right click on each DLL file to ensure that it's not blocked. If it is, you will click that unblock button and click OK. Now we're going to do each file. And in my case, I had no blocked DLL file. But if it is, it will prevent the actual program from running. Now at the bottom, you're going to see register direct output com object. You're going to right click on this file and run as administrator. This will register the com for DOF. Now uh, we're going to open up a, a visual pinball table that has a back glass. And once the back glass is launched, you're going to click on it and make sure that the plugins is checked. I believe this is new in 10.7. It's checked by default. And then you can actually click on the properties and ensure that DOF, direct output, is set to status active. If it is, you're good to go. Next, we're going to attack a big topic. It's the uh, DOF online config tool. Uh, you're going to create an account, and under my account, you will set the Pinscape device to 1, and you're going to save the settings at the bottom. Next, we're going to click Port Assignments, and here we define the ports. So we're going to use the Pinscape software, and the Rig Master ports are going to be the ports on the online DOF config tool. So you see here port 1 is actually my solenoid, which I'm going to show you later. But I've, I've decided to connect four solenoids, and I decided that's going to be the middle right and back left. It doesn't really matter at this point. It's just for testing. Uh, here I can see that see that's a light and look at the port on the left 17 that's important because now 17 we're setting the outer left for the 5 LED bar uh, we got five lights so it's going to be outer left left center right and outer right so we set that in sequence and as you see it uses three colors per light because we have red green and blue here next we have port 32. I got something connected, so let's just go to down the list and then we're going to click on port 32 and you can see that it turns on my flasher. This is the strobe. So then I'm going to go in the online and on the port 32 I say this is a strobe I have. And I got also 9. See 9 is my start button light. And so I'm going to go with port 9 and I'm going to set it this is my start button so the software knows. We're going to click Save Config and here we're going to generate the configuration for the actual file. It's going to save a file on our computer. Alright, I'm going to go where my file downloaded. I'm going to copy this or cut and I'm going to go in the direct output folder and I'm going to select a config folder and I'm going to paste the file in here and I'm going to right click on the uh, direct output config zip file and I'm going to say extract here now here folks is the actual results of part one two and three finally playing some tables with force feedback <laughs> 